Hey, man, you still tripping about clipping? Are you still trying to figure out what game staging is and how to do it right? Well, it's cool. I got you. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, family. And if it's your first time here, make sure you go ahead and take a second to hit that subscribe button because you know this is the number one place on the whole interwebs where you can learn to be a better audio engineer. Shout out to everybody who's already subscribed and already hit that like button before the video even started. Y'all are the truth, all right? And a big shout out to all the wavy seals. Make sure y'all blow up them comments down there. Blow them up. Now, today's video is a topic that I've been asked so many times, man, so many times. Every time I put a little thing out there, what video y'all want to see next? It's always game staging, game staging, game staging. So here we go. Here's my game staging tutorial, all right? Now, what is gain staging? Gain staging is setting the appropriate audio levels in your mix to avoid unwanted clipping and distortion, all right? Simply put, you want to make sure that all your tracks in your session are at the right level. You don't want to be clipping on the master fader. You don't want to be clipping inside of a plug-in. You don't want to be clipping on any tracks. And you also don't want your stuff to be too low, even though you can't really be too low in the digital realm because you can always raise it up. So the main thing that we're going to be worried about today is making sure that stuff ain't too loud and finding out what the optimal level is is to record and mix in the digital realm. Now, before we start, let's take a trip down memory lane and go back in the day to the analog recording days, back when used to, uh, when engineers used to use consoles and hardware equipment. You might have heard about it once or twice, all right? But there was this thing called a VU meter, all right? And I'm gonna pull one up here in my session. So you probably seen one of these VU meters being used because uh, they're all, they're on consoles, they're on hardware gear. A VU meters stands for voltage units right this is a way to measure loudness average loudness of your audio signals now back in the day engineers used to say record your signals as loud as possible without clipping now they had a good reason for that because the consoles that they were using had noise uh the the other gear that they might have been using in the studio like the tape machines or any um outboard effects and stuff all of that stuff had noise that they had to fight with and they wanted to stay away from that noise floor in the digital domain we don't have to deal with that so much. Our interfaces are pretty quiet. If we look at a VU meter here, what we're actually seeing, um, this zero here is where engineers were aimed for for their signals loudness, right? And we can still use that today. But you got to understand the difference between looking at this VU meter and looking at this meter, this digital meter in your Pro Tools or whatever DAW that you might be using. Inside your DAW, when you're looking at the meters over here, these represent decibel units at full scale. All right, now I ain't gonna get too technical on that, but that's DBFS, decibel units full scale. Once you hit that zero, right, that's pretty much the ceiling. Anything beyond that in the digital realm is gonna be considered clipping. Now, how would that translate over to a VU meter? Well, on a VU meter, VU meters are calibrated to a specific level to where if I'm looking at a signal and, and I'm hitting zero on this VU meter, actually what I'm getting is negative 18. So this VU meter that I'm currently using is calibrated to negative 18. And you can change that calibration to pretty much whatever you want. Negative 16, negative 12, whatever you want, you can set it there. So um, keep in mind that when you're looking at a VU meter, the zero actually represents negative 18 dB full scale, all right? And on our meters and Pro Tools, since I'm just using this for example, you could obviously be using any DAW, right? Um, but when you look at the meters in your DAW, negative 18 is gonna be right about here, okay? So as I'm recording my signals in or I'm mixing them, negative 18 is actually the sweet spot. And this is crucial because as you're using plugins, a lot of plugins are also going to recommend that the signals going into those plugins are also hidden at about that negative 18 spot. Read the manual. It's in there. Let's take a look at the session that I have pulled up. Let's see where we're at and how we can get all of our tracks to make sure that they're at the appropriate level before we actually start mixing. So I'm just going to play this section here with just a little piece of it down with these words i write with this pen so it can catch up with your spirit undisturbed by the wind i know you 
Okay, now we can see pretty easily that the master fader has already overloaded. Um, my kick drum over here is hitting pretty loud. It's peaking out at negative two. Now, just because the peak is at negative two doesn't mean that the average um, is still much louder. So, but obviously, when we're working with a kick and when it's pretty much all transient, that peak of uh, negative zero point two, excuse me, that peak of negative zero point two is pretty much that signal because it doesn't really have an uh, average to work off of when you're working off a kick now something more sustained like an 808 or something like that does have average but this kick that punch uh, the initial attack of the kick is pretty much the loudness of that kick here's what we can do to set that right so often what i'll do is open up my vu meter this is one way to kind of see i want that kick to be bouncing right about zero db when i solo it out so i'm gonna solo that kick and you can see right now that that kick is smashing those meters Here's a couple of ways that we can fix this. Because if I put a plug in on this track, and actually, let's just see, right? Let's just say I put a plug in on this track, like an EQ, a standard EQ. If I just put that plug in on there, we can see that we've pretty much maxed all the way out on here. And if I make any adjustments to this kick, maybe boost it a, a half a dB, one dB. Now we're now clipping inside that plugin and we're gonna be getting that digital distortion. So before we do anything with our mix, it's important that we get every track in our session to the right level. So here's how I would go about that. There's a couple different ways. One way, um, first of all, moving the fader is the wrong way. Moving this fader, is not going to adjust anything. The fader is a uh, basically post all your inserts. So um, even if I turn this fader all the way down, I'm gonna do this example again. My bad. Let me put put this EQ back on here. Even if I turn this fader all the way down to where it's pretty much off, you can't even hear it. You see that the full signal is still going in, and if I boost anything, I'm still gonna be clipping. So the fader is post insert. So we need to actually adjust this track's level pre-inserts okay pre-processing so to do that um you can do this in pro tools very easily by using the tracks clip gain all right now the clip gain on a track is going to be and this one is grouped so let me ungroup that so we can see this but the clip gain on a track is going to be to the bottom left corner you'll see a little fader icon with a number right now that will allow me to adjust this pretty easily and you can see that I can just adjust this down now as this is playing let me just play this while I'm looking at my VU meter at the same time so that I can get to that zero uh, spot where I want to just kind of average about that zero okay Cool. Now, of course, I would need to do this for all of the tracks and go through each and every track in my session and make sure that they're all at the appropriate level. But now that I've adjusted this track's level using the clip gain, if I open up this EQ now, you see I have a lot more headroom to play with. I got more space where I can add frequencies into this mix. Another way to do the appropriate gain staging is to use the trim plugin. Now, I often will use this, especially on beat tracks and stuff like that, uh, that I use. Um, Pro Tools just has this. It's called trim. Some other DAWs may call it gain or level or whatever. Uh, but basically, the trim plugin just allows you to do the same thing that the clip gain does, where I'm just going to go uh, down a little bit here. So let's go back here, reset this, and let's put this on the right track. And I can just back this off. So. Another way that you can adjust the level of your track before you start mixing is that if you are using a plugin that has an input and output control, just like this EQ that I'm using, you can adjust the input here. So I could have changed the input level going into this plugin to achieve the same thing, but I want to really fix those levels before I touch any plugins. That's why I'm using either the clip gain or trim plugin.
When all of your tracks are gang staged appropriately, now you can start mixing with more confidence and ensure that you won't start to overload your master mix bus. You will also find that you have a lot higher fader resolution without having to turn the faders all the way down to achieve the same level. For example, if I had to just turn this, uh, let's see, I'm using this trim plugin at negative seven, right? So if I turn this all the way down, let's say I had to get really low, right? The difference in fader resolution between uh, 60 dB, negative 60 dB and negative 40 dB is so small. We can barely even, you know, kind of move around in there. But the difference between 5 dB and 0 dB is a huge. It's a whole lot bigger gap. The closer to unity that you keep your faders, the higher fader resolution you will actually have and be able to make more incremental changes more easily in your mix. So keep in mind that the digital sweet spot is going to be about negative 18 dB full scale. And that's what you want to aim for on all your tracks before you even start mixing. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I drop helpful hints like this all the time, man. All right. Thanks for watching this video and be dope.